very much, Corey Robinson. He's Mike Sanford, Notre Dame's offensive coordinator and quarterback's coach. And let's talk about uh, Corey Robinson a bit in, in the receivers as a group since we're coming out of that interview. But, I mean, what a terrific young man, almost a larger-than-life personality, and really the kind of guy that you coach at a place like Notre Dame. Uh, there's no question. He reminds you of uh, you know the quintessential student-athlete, scholar-athlete for that matter. Um, just very well-rounded. He's the kind of guy that even... You know, during uh, doing bed checkout in Culver, I'd have a great conversation with him about whatever book he's reading. He's reading a book about the next Brazilian president, um, and, and stuff like that's pretty fascinating. It's what's uh, what's what's really neat to be around this environment uh, and the kind of young men you have a chance to coach that are not just great football players, um, but also have have really diverse backgrounds. And, and Corey is one of those guys, and he can play a little football too. And uh, he's one of those guys that we're we're getting to getting to the the point with him between Malik and him and. You know when Deshaun's in there getting reps, he's a guy that we, you have to think of differently. You don't just you don't have to throw the perfect throw every time. He's a vicinity catcher, and uh, we need to be vicinity passers when you got a guy like that out there with his range and athleticism. You know, in all the terms you hear in sports, I've never heard that before, and I love that term, vicinity <laughs> catcher. Get it in the vicinity, and he will catch it. And you have a number of those guys on your roster. There's there's no question. It, it's almost the paradigm shift for me, um, having not really been around that, those kinds of length athletes. Um, particularly at the last place that I, that I had a chance to coach at, um, you know, you almost think, you know, they talk about making the perfect throw and dropping the ball in the basket. And um, these guys are guys that you don't want to, you don't want to freeze the puck and throw it out of bounds. You want to put it in their, in their, in their, you know, three to four yard cylinder and let them go up and, and uh, make sports center. And that's the kind of guys that you have to you have to give give opportunities to make plays. And are the kind of guys that, that you get to coach at a place like Notre Dame. I know this is important to you because you've also coached at Stanford. Mm -hmm. uh, you came to us from your alma mater, Boise State. And I flipped through the Boise State media guide a few times, and there were some guys with some very difficult and interesting uh, majors on that football team as well. So I know the student part of student athlete is very very important to you. You want well-rounded guys and are willing to work with guys who may have to spend a little bit of uh, key time in the classroom even if it's uh, leading into a big game. Uh, those kind of young men are, are, are really enjoyable to coach as well because you can have you know conversations with them when you're building relationships with them that are sometimes outside of football. Um, you know we get a lot of time with meeting times and, and on the field time practice uh, opportunities to, to talk football with them and um, when you're surrounded by by people that are great at what they do uh, in the classroom and whatever field they choose to go into and uh, it's 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 an outstanding thing to be a part of and I've, I've really enjoyed um, getting to know those kinds of, of players on our team and, and, and even in the quarterback room. Of course your dad was the quarterbacks coach here back in 97 and 98. You played at Penn High School so you spent some of your mm -hmm. formative years around here and I know now you're back in the same state as your dad right. as the head coach down at Indiana State but how big a role did that play of any in your wanting to take this job at Notre Dame because you are a very hot commodity. You're one of the up and coming young coaches in this profession. You had big time offers from other places and you chose Notre Dame. Was it the familiarity or was it other things? Uh, you know, I think it was a lot of things. I think it was, um, you know, I think Notre Dame in and of itself is, is, is a place that I've, I've had empirical um, experience with that I've actually lived it, um, you know, with my dad coaching here. And it's, it's a place that I remember so fondly. Um, it's a place that, like we just talked about, that you can be around and coach the best of the best, both in the classroom and, and also on the field. And you can compete for championships and the kind that you really want to compete for. Um, and, and I think that that was a big sell. And for whatever reason, the Sanford family between my dad and my mom and myself, and even my sister going to school at Notre Dame, we've, we've, uh, we've, we've kind of ping-ponged across the country between the West Coast and the state of Indiana. Um, my dad's coached at Purdue, Indiana State, Notre Dame. Uh, you know, I've lived all those places, and now, um, now I'm back here at Notre Dame, which I feel really blessed to be here. But it's, uh, it's a great state. It's a, great, it's a place that you know um, you want to raise your kids in. And you know, I even got my daughter starting, starting kindergarten uh, here, in, I think tomorrow, actually, tomorrow or Thursday. Um, and, and it's the kind of place that you want, you want your kids to grow up around and the values and, and the community that you get. We've chatted before as well, and I know another thing that really attracted you was you've worked with a lot of young head coaches, mm -hmm. and you're now getting a chance uh, to work with a guy who's still young. I don't want BK coming in no, here saying, what are you saying, I'm old? Young, young he's guy. still young, but he's had you know 25 years right. of head coaching experience, and that is something new for you, to work for somebody who's had success at every level and a number of different places. Right, and he, he clearly he was a teenager when he became his, uh, for his yes. first head coach, so he's in his mid to late yeah. 30s now. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, he is. A, he, I mean, his his path is really remarkable. Uh, there's very few, there are very few uh, coaches out there that were head coaches in their early 20s, mid 20s, um, and, and for for him to be a head football coach this long and and to have gone through everything um, that he's gone through at, and at, won national and conference championships. Absolutely, and, and so we're talking Division two all the way up to to the highest level and the biggest stage that, that is Notre Dame football, um, and that's something that that uh, I've always really respected about him. Um, there's guys that you feel like don't necessarily, uh, they don't have the experience that warrants them the opportunity to be the head football coach at Notre Dame. And by, I mean, Coach Kelly, what he's done with his entire uh, coaching career, uh, there, there couldn't have been anybody more deserving to be the head football coach here at Notre Dame. And then uh, being the head coach at Notre Dame, as well as being a coach here, uh, there's a whole another set of circumstances that come with being the head coach here. And he's, he's uh, I think, you know, from what watching it from afar for the first five years, has done an unbelievable job. And that's something that I wanted to, to have a chance to be a part of. In addition to being offensive coordinator, you're also the quarterbacks coach. Very important role, especially with these young quarterbacks. So let's talk about them and start with Malik and the progress he's made since you got to campus. Well, yeah, he's he's made a lot of uh, fundamental changes, um, and, and he's really cleaned some things up from a technique standpoint. Um, you know, looking at at his body work so far this fall camp. You know, he's, he's been competitive. Uh, we put him in a lot of different situations. And that's the one thing that we can't take for granted is he is a new quarterback, a uh, new start, full-time starting quarterback. And we're not taking for granted today. We put him in some really, really compromising situations. And, uh, you know, you make mistakes. And, and that's why I have to remind him, you're not going to be perfect, you know, from, from the get-go. That's why we're putting you in these situations during fall camp um, so that you don't make these same mistakes that you make during during the season. And uh, he's done a great job of being very cognizant of, of the progress that he needs to make. And it really only comes with, it comes with situational football and just playing the game and just putting the ball down and let's see what situations come up. And the more and more we do that going into next week, I think the, the, the more progress that he's gonna make. And these highlights that we are running right now show him both throwing and running the football. And that's what he's going to do for this football team. He's an outstanding runner. And I know you're not gonna protect him because that would limit his effectiveness and a lot of people fear, well, that means he's going to get injured. Not necessarily, but there is that chance. So you do need a number two quarterback who will be ready to go in and run this team. And I know you're in the process of making that decision as a staff. And because you've got a freshman who's very talented as well, that may enter into as well. Do we, do we take that quote unquote uh, red shirt off him? And that's something, hopefully, a decision you won't have to make. But you've got Deshaun. Kaiser and Winbush there, Brandon Winbush. How are they both doing starting with Deshaun right now? Well, starting with Deshaun, if, if we look at the spring game as his, his really his last public body of work, um, I don't know that there's a football player on our team that's, that's really worked harder and has put more effort into, uh, into getting to where he is right now. He, um, he's playing really well situationally. Um, he's making, making tremendous checks to the line of scrimmage and getting us in the right play. And there's just a way that he goes about himself and carries himself um, that, that guys you know really trust him. He's a calming voice for us, and um, he did a nice job today in our you know some of our two-minute situations. Uh, and, and I think that you know the sky's the limit for him in terms of his you know tr his continued growth. Um, you know he's a he's a really really smart young man that that has a has a very uh, good demeanor about him, and I'm excited to, to see his continued growth. I mean he he has a lot of work left ahead of him. There's no question. Uh, Brandon Wimbush is all the talent and tools in the world. Um, right now, for me, uh, his, his, you know, we've thrown a, the entire offense at him and say, go, go out there and, and see what you can do. Because he didn't have the lecture coming in early. And that's tough right. if you want a quarterback to come in and be immediately effective and have command of this entire offense. Right. And, and so we gave everything. It was, it was you know, we, we gave him the whole, uh, you know, fire hose treatment uh, offensively. Gave, gave it to him, you know, and said, hey, drink up, buddy. You know, and, and I, think, uh, I think he's done a good job um, of not letting the moment to be too big for him. Um, staying within the moment, but uh, you know, I think for him right now, he's just trying to slow everything down, so that so the game slows down to him, and he's almost done it to a fault. So he's got to continue to to let his feet talk to him within within the progressions, and um, he's doing a better job. Today was a good day for him. He started slow, and he, he continued to get better as the day went on. And um, urgency with him is the big key. Urgency through your reads. Urgency with your feet. Urgency to, to cut the ball loose. And when he does, it, it's something to watch. You have three really good quarterbacks on this roster, three guys who certainly have the skills and the ability to start at a Division I level. I think Coach Kelly made a great point the other day when talking about Jerron Jones having to miss this year mm -hmm. again, but Notre Dame football is a Broadway play, and I know kids today want to play right away, right. and they want to play all four years. You have a good year here, you especially you have two, but even you have one good year here, everybody sees it, 
and that boosts your career. So you don't necessarily have to be a three or four year starter right. to be able to take advantage of being part of the Notre Dame football program. And also, I'm not sure you want this school to just have three and four year starters because you want to continue to recruit that high level of quarterback and, and keep rotating them in when they're ready to play and excel. Yeah, and, and I think for us, um, you, you want you want to give a young quarterback the opportunity to develop and to see all the different situations. Sometimes uh, to, to learn on the fly can be detrimental to a, to a young man's career. Um, you want them to, to learn from others' mistakes. You want them to be in that film room when we're, when we're correcting Malik. Um, and I think that's been really good for Deshaun, and, and it's already been very good for Brandon. Um, you know, but we're always looking for the best quarterback in the country. We're going to recruit the best quarterback in the country, and uh, we want them to come into an environment that's really healthy, that's very competitive, but that we have a very good time in there, and it's a healthy environment to learn and to grow and to, to take that next step as a player. Um, and I think we've, we've achieved that to this point. I really like this group. They're fun to be around. Um, you know, Coach Kelly's presence in that room uh, with us has been a very, very positive thing for all of us that we're talking the same language. Um, and and I've, I've really enjoyed that component of having Coach Kelly in the, in the quarterback meeting rooms as well, um, which usually isn't always the case. Uh, you know, when you have a head football coach in your meeting, you're, you're, you're perked up a little bit. But in our case, uh, we're speaking the same language. We're learning each other's language. He's learning the way that I speak to him. I'm learning the way he's spoken to them. And uh, throughout spring and now fall camp, it's been a really good progress. So, um, you know, I like where we're at, but now we just got to go play, play well on Saturdays. And we got to build up to that. As we wrap this up, I want to talk about that because I've never seen this on a staff before. You really have three offensive coordinators. You have Brian Kelly, who's been an offensive coordinator. You have Mike Denbrock, uh, who is putting together the offensive game plan during the week, and you have yourself. And, and Coach Kelly right now says he's not even sure what the dynamics are going to look like on game day. In some situations, there might be friction between those coaches. Not only don't I see any of that here, it looks like the three of you are working exceptionally well together mm -hmm. in developing and getting the kids to execute the game plan on the field. Well, I think it just uh, the whole thing comes down to uh, the fact that Coach Kelly and putting this staff together, this 2015 staff, um, was, was very, very upfront um, with, with all of us about our roles. And, you know, the thing that gets misconstrued, I think, in, in, in the world that we live in is that things are different than what we expected. And quite frankly, every aspect of what, what, what I anticipated in coming here to, to coach at Notre Dame has been 100% true. And, and that sets the tone. That, that, um, that clarity from the head football coach sets the tone. And then beyond that, the fact that we have, we have great men on our offensive staff. Um, starting with Coach Denbrock, um, you know, going through to, to Coach Denson, Coach Heastan, um, and, and, and Coach Booker. And, and I think that there's a good cohesiveness between us all. Uh, there, there really are no massive egos in that room, um, unless I'm the one that they're saying is the massive ego. But uh, the other guys, for sure, <laughs> uh, are just, just really just quality men um, that, uh, that really just want to do the same thing, and that's put the best plan together and go out and win a whole heck of a lot of football games. No, but no one is saying that you have an ego. We had BK on, and we're about to hear from <laughs> Coach Denbrock. I know this is a, a valuable hour for you, and I know you have to go meet the media now. Thanks for spending some of it. Hey, appreciate us. it. It's always good.